Hello. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Doing well. All right, the court is calling 2022 CR 8978 State of Texas versus Didani Yarborough. Didani Yarborough. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Zach Dunn for the state. Susan Kramer for Mr. Yarborough. And are you Mr. Yarborough? Yes, ma'am. All right, you entered a plea of burglary of a habitation with intent to commit felony force. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine. State is solid on your application. And this will run concurrent with 696403. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report, State? Yes, Judge. Defense? Yes, Judge. Any objections to the PSI report, State? Nothing from the State. Defense? Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Yarbrough, you entered a plea on August 21st of no contest. Uh, I've reviewed the stipulations. I'm unsure if it was said on the record, but I believe it was by Judge Angelini. The court is finding that there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court is deferring finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. State is silent on your application. Uh, defenses, do you have any witnesses? No, Judge. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Um, judge, I believe the, the PSI speaks for itself. It speaks to the love that his family has for this. Um, I have had many conversations with Mr. Yarbrough about him needing to, that you're going to want an explanation for what was he thinking that day, because he's basically a good kid. You know, he doesn't get into trouble and he, you know, he's been taking full responsibility for all of his actions. And I think he's a great candidate for deferred adjudication probation on this, especially when the uh, complainant forgives him, doesn't want him, is fine with him getting probation and kind of wants them back in their lives, although there isn't no contact with her, but she doesn't have the child. She's the grandmother. So he said, it's okay if you keep that no contact while he's on the deferred. All right. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth shall help you, God? Yes, ma'am. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. D. Donna Yarbrough. All right. So before I begin answer, uh, asking you questions, yes, I want to tell you something right here now. Whenever my brothers were late for their curfew that my mom sat down. You know what they would always try to tell her? I don't belong in a gang. I haven't committed any crimes. I don't do any drugs. So don't give me that, you know? Yeah. All right? Yes, because people who are obeying the law shouldn't be doing any of that. Yes, ma'am. So how old is your daughter? She's uh, just turned three in July 17th. All right. So. Yes, ma'am. And I have uh, another one on the way due in uh, November. Uh, next week will be the mother of my child's uh, eight month. All right. And is this the mother of the other child as well? No, ma'am. All right. So you're just procreating. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, and you now you understand where babies come from? Yes, ma'am. And if you can't support your children, you should not be having a lot of children. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. So why were you smoking marijuana? Coping mechanism. All right. So uh, it is very bad for a child to come to their grandmother's house smelling like marijuana. Yes, ma'am. So do you think it's appropriate for your children to smoke marijuana? No, ma'am, not at all. Well, that's what you did with your baby. Because if you're smoking marijuana around them, which obviously you were, because otherwise the baby wouldn't smell like marijuana, the baby's clothes wouldn't smell like marijuana, we would not be here. Yes, ma'am. And you understand that the grandmother loves her grandchild. Yes, ma'am. And wants what's best for a grandchild. Yes, ma'am. Wouldn't do anything to hurt her grandchild. Most definitely. Yes, ma'am. You've been doing things to hurt your grandchild. I mean, to hurt your child. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. So are you diagnosed mentally with anything? Uh, ADHD, but that's that's all. That's no excuse. No, no there is not. Yes, you should not be using marijuana. Yes, and the court is not going to allow you to use marijuana in this court while you're on probation. It is illegal in Texas to use marijuana. Yes, ma'am. If I grant your application for deferred adjudication, and if you use marijuana while you're on probation, guess what? A motion to revoke is going to be filed, and you're looking at life in prison. Yes, so it's up to you to decide whether potentially going to prison for life is worth that. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So are you employed? 
Uh, I, I will be as soon as I get out. That's no problem. Have you been employed before? Yes, ma'am. Doing what? Uh, warehousing, construction, manual labor, uh, irrigation, uh, can row work, uh, Amazon warehouse. All right. And how old are you? Uh, I just turned 26 in July. All right. And how far did you go in school? Uh, I have my high school diploma and I have my associates in St. Phillips uh, College. And what? Uh, art. And what are you planning on doing with this art degree? I uh, really want to uh, own my own business, but it's steps to that. I still have to pick up the knowledge, but okay. more. Is so to how how does and, and, you know, I think art is great. One of my brothers was great in art and still is great in art. But how does you going to get your art degree translate into I want to own my own business? Is your uh, art going to be connected to that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, starting uh, cartoons, drawing uh, magazines, trying to get it in the newspaper. So what like steps that. are you going to take to do that? Uh, owning my own name, uh, business logo, uh, business account, okay. uh, still learning and uh, provi- uh, picking up the knowledge to do so. All right. And how often were you using marijuana? Uh, I say twice a week. Nobody uses marijuana twice a week. Uh, I get I get drug tested at a uh, job. So you you you. Them. You figured out when you could get a negative test? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And are you using, have you used anything other than marijuana? Uh, alcohol, but that's uh, occasionally birthdays, uh, holidays, Thanksgiving. You know, While you're Christmas. on probation, you're not allowed to drink alcohol. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. This is what the court will do. Court will sentence you to 10 years. Deferred adjudication. I'm going to request parenting classes. And you're very lucky that the grandmother didn't want you to go to prison. So we're going to do uh, parenting classes, 200 hours of community service restitution. If he enrolls or obtains a business certificate so you can better yourself, and completes the parenting classes, the community service hours will be deemed satisfied. So to satisfy those 200 hours of community service restitution, you can go out and do community service hours or either you can better yourself. And bettering yourself would mean you take parenting classes and you get a certificate or something that shows me you're taking steps to accomplish in life what you wanna accomplish. Yes, ma'am. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. When's the last time you used marijuana? Five months ago. All right. So he should be clean. So when he's released, we're going to do a UA. If for some reason when he's released, uh, it's positive for marijuana, start testing for levels. And just to let you know, um, he's set on the DWI tomorrow. I'm not his lawyer on that, but it's a JSAT, so he won't get out today. It'll have to wait till tomorrow. Okay. And then um, proof of employment within 45 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. I'm going to order no unsupervised contact with minors until you complete parenting classes. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So you can have contact with your child, but someone has to supervise. And if the it grandmother. Can't it can't be her because there's a no contact. Well, there's a no contact under this case. If for some reason the grandmother wants to have com- contact and wants to be the person who supervises, just let probation and myself know and I'll lift the no contact order. Thank you, Jeff. We're going to do anger management. So no contact with Norma, I'm sorry, Nora Ramos. And this is supposed to run concurrent with County Court cause number 696403. And there's to be, I'm going to follow the recommendation for the TAP evaluation, which is intensive outpatient treatment with probation. And there's to be weekly sober support meetings. 
And I'm going to want field visits one time per month for four months. And after that probation, if you think all is well and he no longer needs field visits, you all can do the field visits as you see appropriate. Probation, is there anything else he needs? Mr. Yarbrough, is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, ma'am. All right, good luck to you. We can go off the record from here on out, everything you do. There are two questions you should ask yourself. One, is the decision I'm about to make and what I'm about to do, could it potentially result in me going to prison for life? If the answer is yes, don't do it. If the answer is, mm, it could, maybe it couldn't, don't do it. That whole thing that you're doing with your job where you know when they're testing you, so you're saying, ah, oh, well, I use marijuana on this day, not on this day, so I can get a negative test. Don't do that here because it may not catch you the first time, but ultimately it's going to catch you. And then you know what's going to end up happening? Warrant's going to be issued for your arrest. You're either going to make bond or you're not. If you don't make bond, you're going to be at the jail. You're going to be brought over in orange. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And just as a side note, how tall are you? I'm uh, six, six. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Do better. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. All right. You too. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing, Your Honor? Oh, I'm doing great. Are you all ready to proceed on the motion to revoke? Really? Court is calling 2022 CR 8978 State of Texas versus Dideni Yarborough. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the State of Texas. Defense? Written hour for the defense. Yeah. Are you Mr. Yarbrough? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you review the document entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision with your attorney, and did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. And are you the same Dideni Yarbrough who's placed on deferred adjudication in 2022 CR 8978 for the offense of burglary of a habitation with intent to commit a felony on September 28, 2023 for a period of 10 years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. State. A violated condition number one on or about the third day of November 2023 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Nadine Shaquan Darborough, committed the offense of driving while intoxicated in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Uh, Your Honor, state waives all of the violations. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true? Write the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there a proposed agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Is the moral recognition that there be five weeks of reporting and 90 days of random meetings? That's the agreement, Your Honor. All right. What is happening with the DWI? Judge, the first occurrence is on the 14th of May. I have incomplete discovery in that case. I'm appointed for that case. Okay. Uh, probation, what is your recommendation? Okay. All right. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Uh, All right, what have you done since you've been on probation? Uh, for my business certificate, I'm uh, now a student for SEC, San Antonio College. I have my I student ID. I took my TSA, and all I have to do is sign up for classes. Okay. All right, that's good. Okay. So here's the thing. There are other things that you need to start working on, too, that's like your parenting classes. That's like, I'm not, um, you've already played true to the DWI, so that means that you were drinking. You're not allowed to drink on probation. I think I tell everybody that, or at least a majority of the people, when they're before me on a specific case. Doesn't matter if you're drinking in your house. Doesn't matter if you're drinking in your backyard. Everybody who's on probation, you're not allowed to drink alcohol. No. So do you realize by drinking alcohol, you're basically saying, oh, I'm okay with doing life in prison. I'll take this drink of alcohol. Do you understand? You're going to have to grow up and realize can't drink alcohol, can't smoke marijuana, can't do any of this on probation. That's what being on probation is. You don't have the same 
rights and privileges that other people have. You understand? You have a contract with this court. I know you have an agreement with the state. Probation has given me their recommendation, but it's really up to me. So even though they've agreed that you be continued, I could revoke you and send you to prison right now for life. You understand? Do not come back here for this nonsense. We're always here in the 187 to help people if they need help with drug or alcohol or whatever, or you have some issues, pick up the phone, call probation, and we'll see what we can do. But you are not allowed to drink. Do you understand? From here on out, everything that you do, you need to ask yourself, because this potentially result in me going to prison for life. If the answer is yes, don't do it. If the answer is maybe, don't do it. If it's like, I don't know, pick up the phone, call probation. You understand? All right. This is what the court is going to do. Court is finding violation of condition number one. True. Um, are you employed? Uh, All right. How much is the UA hotline? Your Honor, um, your analysis will be worth $10 to $20. Um, and depending on how often the license all right. Is there any other issue with him other than this alcohol? Don't report. You could go to prison. You understand? Yes, ma'am, I do. So this is what the court is going to do. The court is finding number one true. The court will deny the motion. The court is going to alter and amend conditions to include the following. There's to be 90 sober meetings in 90 days. Uh, there's you to report to probation. One time, uh, probation is one time every two weeks too much for you all. All right, you're going to report to pay probation one time every two weeks for 60 days. If you miss reporting, they're going to file a motion to revoke. Do you understand? Now, the uh, MRT. That's to help you make better decisions. Do you need help on how to make better decisions? Yes, I'm All right. If you do, let me know. We'll give you something. Yes, All right. So and the MRT probation, is there anything else? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? All right. That's the court's ruling. We can go off the record, make better decisions. Otherwise, you may find yourself at the prison. Yes, and when you go to prison, people will ask you, what are you here for? And you're going to say, well, I drank alcohol or I didn't report to probation. All right. Yes, Good luck to you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Oh, thank you. God bless you, too.